No, back up. Oh, God. <laughs> what? Why are there so many of them? I just put these guys in. What's happening? What? <laughs> oh, there's five of them. What's going on? What a perfect video game. Listen, I know I say this every time, but most of this video is just me going back into pre-made areas and touching stuff up again. Every habitat gets a little refresher this time, but especially the bison. I go back in and fill in the environment with a lot more plants because, well, since the last video, I realized I hadn't included nearly enough tool and wildflowers as Yosemite Meadows really have. We don't really have tool in the game, but I substitute for elephant grass. Uh, I'll put some pictures up of Yosemite Meadows in bloom. They're really absolutely gorgeous things to see. I'm they're so covered to the brim in wildflowers, the term California Super Bloom is used to describe them, and I think that's not only metal, but really cool. And I don't think I really accomplished that in the work I did in my last video, so I went back and redid it. And I'm, I'm so much happier with the new result. I took pretty big inspiration from Wobona Meadow in Yosemite especially, as well as the Wobona Covered Bridge for the build I'm doing right now. The Wobona Bridge is much less open. The walls are completely closed off, in fact, but I wanted to keep it rather open in this situation to give a good view of the environment, as well as providing a good area to stop and get a good look at the bison. There are only a dozen or so traditional covered bridges in California. They're mostly a European thing, in fact. The Wawona Covered Bridge was actually built by European settler uh, Galen Clark, I believe it's pronounced, around 1857, but was not covered until 1879 by the owners of the nearby Wawona Hotel. They said they built the cover on top of the Wawona Bridge and uh, with, with a, and I quote, steeply pitched roof? to remind them of their home in New England. New England. <laughs> and I, of course, took some artistic liberty with the roof as well and added a second layer on top just to add a little interest. And I think it ends up looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing I do in this video is I, I, I put fencing around this picnic area to make it a peafowl habitat. This one requires a little suspension of disbelief. I, I put the peafowl in here to emulate free roaming birds, though it's not necessarily the best for peafowl to, peafowl to roam free in zoos because of the trash and predation and human interaction, but I wanted to have them roam this picnic area sort of as a nod to the fact that California has been having a a bit of a peafowl problem, not just in zoos. Uh, the peafowl is becoming have increasingly prominent, even being considered a pest in certain areas from Sacramento all the way down to Los Angeles. It's it's a crazy thought, but that's uh, how it's been since peafowl have been introduced to California. And that's kind of the reason I wanted to put these guys in here. It took a little bit of finagling to get the uh, uh, get, to get it all to work right, but I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, Peafowl can fly and can jump up to eight feet, even if they're clipped. So this little fencing that I'm putting in right now and the waterfall cliff to the right probably wouldn't actually hold these birds in real life. So that takes a little suspension of disbelief as well. A little bit more about peafowl and nature in general i guess the the green and blue you see on these blue peafowls is 
100% fake. The only birds with truly green pigment are turacos, and nearly every plant and animal in nature that appears blue is faking it. That's the reason the the wings of a morpho butterfly and the uh, feathers of a peafowl seem to shimmer. They're made of a small crystalline structure that reflects only blue light instead of the color being pure pigment. It's it's light scattering, the same reason the sky is blue. Uh, less than 1% of all animals use true blue pigment, and no flowers have a true blue pigment. Uh, most flowers use red anthocyanin pigment and, and modifies the structure of it via pH shifts or mixing molecules. So things like bluebells, uh, fake hydrangea, fake morning glories it's all a trick of the eye and so so are these peafowl uh after i finish up the picnic area though i i do go start work on a staff space for the buffalo habitat as well as some backstage ish cattle pen type deals the thing i was talking about in the last episode i i like the idea of little eden having some sort of American bison breeding program going on, uh, being part of uh, the big conservation herds. The building itself is inspired by a reference image of a big log cabin in Maine, not necessarily a uh, Yosemite, let alone a California inspired build, but I think it fits in pretty well. I'm, I'm taking a page out of Silverette's book with the idea that staff should always be able to see all the animals in the exhibit at once just for safety's sake and i think the raised platform accomplishes that pretty well as well as uh, allowing as well as housing all the extra staff buildings and providing a new take on the wooden architecture i've been leaning towards with little eden all the log cabins and stuff uh, gameplay wise the only gridded pieces in this build are the log floors which have been which are supposed to be used for the animal climbing structures, but I, I think they they work pretty well here. Um, I also put all the staff buildings at the top of the structure, which means that I had to put paths to make and make stairs up to them. Unfortunately, I couldn't get those to work functionally like my reference image because the game doesn't allow stair connections to the bottom of a building, which I understand, but it just meant that I had to put a weird little rockwork path to the left of it uh, and and try to hide it with the rocks and foliage, which isn't too bad. It just, it was a little tedious and it looks eh. The little path area in front of the raised cabin is a prime spot for a little plaza and a viewing area for the bears. So that's definitely what I'll do there. I already put some paths in there and a few plants of the little cypress trees, but I'm not certain if they're gonna stay. Uh, you'll see the cattle pen for the bison gave me a heck of a time. It looks so simple, especially with all the awesome small metal and wood pieces we have in game. It's basically just a fence, but trying to make it actually functional was where I ran into some trouble, as, as you'll see. You know, I should probably check if the buffalo can even walk through this before I put it in. It looks like it. I, I mean, it looks like they can fit through it, in real life at least. It seems like the right size. If they can't fit through this, I'm gonna cry. All right, the moment of truth. They can't, oh wait, I have to play it, hold on. Okay. No, no, oh my God, they're stuck. Look at their welfare. I, I do have to end up going back and uh, fixing how the gates look. But uh, I'm getting to that point in the time lapse where I'm running out of things to say. So I think I'm gonna go uh, start up the real time portion and just show you what I've done from there. 
uh, we'll go over the meadows and the final product for the gate, as well as something that I uh, put in for the flamingos. But with that, I will be back with the real-time portion. I'm back! Uh, and check out how much better this looks. With all the flowers and the elephant grass, and I think it looks- it, it's a much better emulation of the Yosemite meadows that I was trying to mimic. I'm- I'm really happy with it. This view right here especially is one of my favorites now. The uh, covered bridge with the cabin in the background. I'm- I'm really proud of it. And it'll look much better once I have all the mountains finished up. Right now they're just a plain dirt texture, but we'll- we'll fix it up when we get to it. Um, beyond that... Here is the finished version of the cattle pen. The bison do uh, get in there and they can go back out. Uh, since I was recording, we had quite a few babies and they make me so happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly in awe of how good this game looks. There is a little bit more touching up I need to do in the bison habitat because since I messed with the terrain a little bit, we do have some floating plants now and then but I'll I'll fix it later <laughs> uh, over here near the bear habitat this is um, around the area that I think I'll put the backstage in for the bears because I do want to have another another little plaza right here as well as some viewing areas for the bears because I think this gives a really good view of the whole habitat and since then, the only other viewing areas we have are all the way on the other side of the path. So if you look across, you have to wander all the way up here and then down across on the other side. I just, I thought it was kind of necessary to have something like that. I did end up moving uh, this one, the little gazebo area, and put it over here too, just because I like how it looked better. Hold on. <laughs> Let me fix this. Uh, there we go. Um, I this is the other thing I want to show you. I put in some uh, semi backstage uh, holding area for the flamingos with the intent that most of that stuff would be underneath this little building with staff entrances on this side as well as inside so it it just kind of made sense to me that they would merge this building into be backstage as well and it I, it meant that I didn't really have to build too much or move too many things around which is which is always good in my book um, let's see. this is the finished peafowl habitat there's like a million of them I don't know where they came from these little things right here are to emulate the uh, kind of metal netting that is often put around uh, new tree growth to make sure that they aren't interrupted by humans or by animals, that sort of thing. And I wanted to include these because recently they become, they've been becoming a much bigger part of Yosemite with the new tree growth, that kind of thing. I don't think I really did too much other than that. I, I did touch up the bear habitat as well. I put in a lot more uh, grass and flowers and I did this after I touched up the bison habitat and it, it just made sense because looking at the uh, flamingos and looking at the bison, it's clear that I, I kind of knew what I was doing a lot more with these two than with the bear. Because the bear just kind of feels like a transition between the two. So I definitely want to put a lot more thought and love into this area. Which is another reason why I wanted to put this little area up here. I had it originally intended for this to be another animal. But I, I think it'll just flow better and work better as a zoo. With the intent to have a, a visitor plaza right here with viewing areas. This is the little jank pathway here. It's not perfect. I do need to clean it up a little bit, but I was 
<laughs> I was just upset at Planet Zoo at that point, so I kind of gave up. But other than that, I don't really think I have much more to show you. We went over most of it in the time lapse. So with that, I'll leave you with some cinematic shots, some music, and I'll be back in the next episode with something pretty exciting, something that I've been really been waiting for uh, since the beginning of Little Eden. But until then, enjoy the cinematics. Thank you.